Lord, she called the name of Jesus so powerful, I'm telling you, it just rang all over that place. And as she called the name of Jesus, the ladies, the sisters got up, and they began to march around the building. They began to sing and rejoice. And you're talking about dancing and shouting. And that music came forth. Next thing I know, something had got in my feet. <laughs> and I was shouting along with them. Amen. And uh, we was on our way back to the hotel. And the pastor says to me, he says, uh, Bishop, he said, how, where did you learn how to dance? <laughs> I couldn't give no comment. <laughs> Oh, that I know that God had allowed me to identify with them. And I'll tell you, everywhere we went, the people received us open and friendly. People came up to me as though I had been known them all my life, began to, hold, began to strike a conversation. Even the soldiers would come up to me and hug me and shake my hand. I don't know what it was. But I want you to know this, that Highland is being seen in Africa. This service is streamed alive in Africa. Amen. You ought to give God a shout. One of the pastors says to me, he says, Bishop, he says, I saw you preaching in your robe. And I knew then he had saw Highland. Amen. And so I went a little bit further. I gave them my, I gave them my program so they can tune in every week and listen to our program. Amen. And God allowed us to be a blessing to those pastor, Pastor Elijah. He's done a great work. That is his offering, the all, over two or 300 children that he's, that he's taken care of. And um, they, they had a debt in, this, in the offering there was about $700. We paid that debt off before we left. And he is in the process of planning another church. And we agreed with him that we would help him put a, to put a, um, a roof on that church. Amen? Which would cost in American dollars about $1,500. Amen? But I think that's nothing to invest in the kingdom of God knowing that we are part of what's going on over there. Amen. It's time to reach outside of these walls and reach into places, amen, that God wants to touch other people's lives. How many believe that? How many agree with that? Amen. It's time, amen, for Highland to reach out of these walls and reach into places that you and I will never go. Maybe some of you will never go to Africa, but this morning we are in Africa. We're in Ghana, amen. We're in Burundi, amen. This morning, they are seeing us alive. They have streamed alive. Amen. And we all rejoice and give God the glory. Amen. Come on, let's stand up. Let's give God the glory. Come on, everybody. Let's give God the glory. Let's let them see how much we love the Lord in the United States. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise. God, we give you thanks today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you bless the sharing of your word this morning. Bless each and every one of these, God, that are here. Give me the courage to share what you want me to share this morning. Give me the strength, God. I need your help. I need your help. So strengthen me for this time and this hour. And I'll give you all the praise and I'll give you all the glory through Christ our Savior. As you remain standing, your Bible's open to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. We're going to read six verses this morning, and then we're going into the message. My, the title of my message this morning is All for Us. All for Us. That's the title of my message this morning. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form not comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. He's a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely 
He has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one of his to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All for us. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. I won't be able to go down in full details of this message this morning because the Lord has laid so much on my heart that I really want to, I really want to share with you this morning. But I want to emphasize on what the prophet was saying. The prophet was declaring what God had said in his word. He was declaring even from the very beginning of God's divine purpose that God had put in place in order to bring about his divine plan. God knew in the beginning what was going to take place. God is never taken by surprise. Nothing happened in the earth without God being aware of it. God knows every detail, everything that goes on in the world, because why? He is the one who has created the world. Because, you know, the world began in him. The world originated in God. And that's why when God spoke, the world came out of God and became into existence. So, that being so, then it lets us know that nothing can surprise God. So, when Adam and Eve sinned, it didn't surprise God. God wasn't shocked because they disobeyed him. God knew. He knew their heart. He knew what they was going to do. But yet God, at the same time, God has something in the back of his mind that he was waiting to initiate, that he was waiting to activate because, because he, knew, he knew their heart and he knew uh, their, their frame. He knew their makeup and he knew their shortcomings and he knew that they was going to disobey him. But there was something greater than their disobedience that was existing in the heart of God. And that was the love that God had for his creation. That's why the Bible said God is love. Love. No matter, no matter how you try to give a definition of love, you and I can never define love. Love goes beyond the human comprehension. When we think we can figure love out, love escapes us. Because the Bible said God is love. And if God is love, who, in, who, who, who among us can figure out God? Who among us can explain and define who God is? When we try to explain God, the Bible says God is a spirit. Can we see spirit? Amen. The Bible said God is a word. Can we define word? He, he goes beyond the human, the human comprehension. He escapes us when we're trying to, when we're trying to figure him out. Amen? But because God loves us. Will you say with me? God love us. God love you. That's why he made, that's why he created everything that he created, because he loved you. I want to greatly emphasize that this morning because there are many of you this morning that don't believe that God really loves you. You believe that you have gone too far. You believe you have overstepped the boundary. And you believe that nobody really cares about you. But I want to convince you this morning that there is a God that really, really loves you. In spite of who you are. In spite of your faults. In spite of your fears. There is a God who got his hand on your life. 
guiding you every morning you wake up. He is there to greet you because he loves you. Everything God did, he did it for us. God didn't create the earth for himself. He created the earth for us. God didn't create the herbs and the earth for himself. He created it for us. The animals and the birds and the sky, the moon, he created it for us. Everything God did, he did it for us. He had you in, a, in his heart. Hallelujah. When man sinned, it grieves God's heart. That's what it says in the book of Genesis 6 chapter. When God saw the imagination of man's heart, how he was continuing wicked, the Bible said it grieved God in his heart that he had created man. But God knew he had to make a difficult choice. And so the Bible said he destroyed man over the face of the earth. But God is never without a seed. And God preserved him a seed. And that seed was Noah and his family. And through that seed, God replenished the earth and raised up humanity again. But he, but he gave humanity a covenant. He gave humanity a promise. He promised them that I will always remember you when things are going from bad to worse. I will never forget you and I will never do what I did before because I understand your shortcomings. I understand your weakness and I'm going to stand by you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to uphold you because I love you and I want you to fulfill the purpose that I put in your heart because I created you to fulfill a purpose. I didn't create you to walk upon this earth to be aimless in earth, upon this earth and not to find your purpose. But God created you to fulfill your purpose. You have a purpose in this earth. And everything he did, he did it so you could find your purpose. And you will never be happy until you find your purpose. You will never be complete until you find your purpose. Once the, it, God gave me a thought, and it, it goes like this. When a man finds God, he finds himself. If a man never finds, him, finds God, he never discovers who he is. But once you find God, then you find yourself. And that's what we need to do. We need to find God so, then, so that we can know who we are. Because once we find God, all of who we are is going to come to the forefront. And you're going to see yourself like you've never seen yourself before because God's going to turn a new light upon your life. Because you see, the, the mean beforehand, you've not, you haven't been walking in light, but you've been walking in darkness. When you walk in darkness, you can't enjoy the light. But the Bible says, who has believed our report? To whom is the arm, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Jesus Christ was God's arm in the earth. He was God's, he was God's uh, uh, love in the earth that was stretched out. Throughout the book of Isaiah, all through the book of Isaiah, he said his hand is stretched out still. And God's hand is stretched out still through his love, through the love that he had manifested through his son. Amen. But man has rejected that love. Man has refused to accept that love. Because man do not, does not want to walk in God's ways. He wants to live in his own ways. Because he does not want his ways to come to the light. Because once he, once he walk, come into the light, then his ways is going to be revealed. The real him is going to be manifested. And man, that's the reason why man don't want to believe what thus says the Lord. That's the reason why he's refusing to believe God. But the Bible said he grew up before him as a tender plant. Jesus, when he was 12 years old, he came into the temple. And they, was a, they marveled at the wisdom that he, that he had as a young boy, 12 years old. God hid him. God hid him until at age of 12. No one knows. History doesn't know what happened, what Jesus did between, after he was born until 12 years old. All the only thing we know, he was 12 years old. 12 years old, he came into the temple. And after 12 years old, he disappeared. God hid him. Because God had to protect him until the right time. He couldn't come forth until history, until the prophecy began to line up. Once prophecy began to line up, Jesus gradually began to come on scene. We find him coming on scene at the river of Jordan. 
when, when God had raised up his, his cousin, amen, John the Baptist, and John the Baptist was down in the river of Jordan preaching the gospel, and he said, he said, there come one that's after me who is mightier than I, who shoot lights, and I'm not worthy to stoop down and loose, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and that will follow. And after a while, John looked up, and he saw him coming. And John said, there he is, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And here comes Jesus, the Son of God, coming down to the river of Jordan. Hadn't did no sin, but he had to fulfill the Scripture. He had to lay the foundation so you and I could build on that foundation. He had to lay the foundation so you and I can walk on that foundation. So he came and, and allowed himself to be baptized, to be buried, so that when we believe in him, except we believe and be buried with him, we cannot rise with him. But if we rise with him, we're going to walk with him. We're going to live in him. We're going to talk in him. And he and I are going to be one. And we're going to have fellowship together. And we're going to have a marvelous time together because the Christ that rose, he's going to be in us. And the Bible says he was a man of sorrow. He became a man of sorrow for you and I. He was a man of grief for you and I. So when grief strikes our heart, when we're smitten with grief, when we, when we are smitten with sorrow, we can say, we have not a high Savior, cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but it was in all points tempted like as we are, and yet without sin. He has already been where you are. He's already suffered what, you, what you're suffering. He's already experienced what you're experiencing. He's already gone through what you're going through. So he's sufficient to meet your need. He's sufficient, amen, to do what is necessary in your life because he's already became a man of sorrow. He's already became a man of grief. He's already been wounded. You think you've been wounded, but he has been wounded more than you have. But the Bible said he was wounded. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was on his way to the cross. His family rejected him. His friends rejected him. How would you feel you being the son of God? People call you a demon. You're the prince of Beelzebub. Let's wound him. He came back to his hometown. His own people wouldn't receive him. They threw him out of the synagogue, drug him down to the end of the city, intending to throw him over the cliff. But the Bible said God took him and hid him and allowed him to walk through them. Never was a man like Jesus in so much as that, who is this? Who is this that has power over, the, over demons? Who is this that when he speaks, the wind will behave? They didn't know that they were dealing with the Christ, the son of the living God. They didn't know that they were dealing with him who created the world, who made all things by his power. They didn't know that it was created, moved, that they were dealing with the creator of heaven and earth. It was Jesus, the son of God. It was Jesus, the lily of the valley. It was Jesus, the bright and morning star. It was Jesus, the mighty rose of Sharon. Ooh, glory to God. It was Jesus that they were trying to throw away, brother. It was Jesus that they were trying to throw out of the synagogue. But he was wounded. The prophet saw him going, going to the whipping post for you and I. He um, and The Bible says, even though he was a son, yet learned he obedient by the thing which he suffered. Even the cross, of going to the cross. Jesus didn't have to go to the cross, but he went to the cross for us. He went there for you. Amen. He became a substitute for you. And so the Bible says, when they, uh, the Bible says he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. Without him being afflicted, without him being beaten, you and I cannot have no peace. But the Bible said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Jesus Christ has brought us before God, and he has reconciled us before God. You and I was enemies of God. You and I was lost without God. You and I didn't have no hope without God. But Jesus brought us before the throne of God, and Jesus gave us hope. And Jesus, amen, washed away our sins. And Jesus says, now you are my sons and daughters in the kingdom of heaven. That's who you are today. 
He did it for you. He did it for me. When you was lost without hope, Jesus died for you. The Bible says we're healed by his stripes. Then the Bible says when God sent Philip down out in the desert to find this eunuch, he was sitting there reading the Holy Scriptures. And he was reading about this man that, I, that, was, that they was leading to the slaughter. And Philip says, to, uh, uh, the unit said to Philip, he said, who is this? Who is he talking about? And the Bible said, Philip opened his word up, and Philip, the Bible said, Philip preached Jesus to him. <laughs> That's what we need to do. We need to preach Jesus to people. We need to preach Jesus to people. We need to tell people that Jesus loves them. We need to tell people that Jesus died for them. We need to preach Jesus to the people. Because that's what's going to save people is Jesus. And the Bible says people, uh, Philip didn't preach theology to him. Philip didn't preach doctrine to him. But preacher said to, Philip said to him, Jesus, I've, 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 I present to you Jesus. And when he, Philip presented to him Jesus, he looked over and saw the river, and he said, what prevent me from being baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest that Jesus is the Christ, and they walked down to the river together, and the Bible said they was baptized because, Peter, because Philip told him who Jesus was. And that's what we need to do today. We need to tell the world who Jesus is. People need to know that God has brought good news to the world. Jesus is good news. He is good news to, to the world. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same today as he was on yesterday. He's that same Jesus that came, amen, so many hundred years ago. He's that same Christ. And I want you to know he's coming back again. <laughs> he's coming back again. But the prophet said, listen to what he says. He said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And with the stripe we are healed. And listen to that. He says, all, all we like sheep have gone astray. Remember where you was when God found you? Oh, yes, I know you remember. That's why some of you are laughing. You remember where God, you remember where you was? You remember where you was when God found you? God walked upon you in a, in, a, in a predicament place, didn't he? In an uncomfortable place, God walked upon you, didn't he? He walked in that room and he saw you and God says, now is your time. We all like sheep have gone astray. The sheep, the sheep have become, the sheep becomes one of the most, uh, 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 they become some of the most, easy animals to be uh, to destroyed and to be overcome by the enemy because they lose, they lose their sense of direction. They can't find their way back to the fold and they need someone to go and bring them back. Amen? And that's why we are like sheep because many times we lose our way. We, 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 we start out right but somehow in some way we, we, we lose our way. We find ourselves going in the wrong path. We're just like sheep. And that's, so that's why he said, we all like sheep have gone astray and everyone have turned to his own way. Everyone have turned his own way. And, but God has laid upon him. He has laid upon him my sins. He has laid upon him your sins. He has laid upon him your iniquity. He has laid upon him my iniquity. God laid it upon him. He was oppressed. How many times do you feel oppressed? He was oppressed. He was afflicted. And he opened out his mouth. How many times even your family sometimes give you trouble? Sometimes the parents tell the children, you ain't going to be nothing. And that's why we find lots of them going to jail, because parents done beat their spirit down. They're in a failing the press. I was reading in the newspaper in Ghana. 
there's a there there is a there was a uh, a uh, a severe problem among the young people. There's over eighty thousand young people <coughs> committing suicides every year. It's an epidemic, and the, and the public officials don't even want to talk about it because they can't they can't do they can't handle it. But young people are, are being, and one of the, the, the main thing that why they're committing suicide is depression. 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 You ought to be careful how you allow yourself to enter into these spirits that come upon you. <clears throat> these spirit of oppression, <clears throat> the spirit of oppression will overtake you before you know it. Next thing you'll be sitting down there, can't do anything. You can't even raise your head. You won't even get out of the bed. You're lying so depressed. That's the devil wants to defeat you of what God has planned for your life. You ought to look the devil in the face and say, I'm getting out of this bed. I'm going to be what God has called me to be. I'm not going to be depressed because I am not called, amen, to be held bondage by you. I'm going to get up from here. You ought to get up out of that depressed spirit. You ought to stop letting the enemy depress you. You ought to stop letting them beat you down. Get up out of that depressed spirit and lift up your head and declare, I am a son of God. I am a child of God. My sins has been forgiven, and my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. He was taken from prison to judgment. Sometimes God allow. Many of us to be incarcerated in order to find ourselves. Because we're so wrapped up in this world, in the things of this world, until we lose sight of what God has planned for us. But God allow you to be in the wrong place at the wrong time that he may incarcerate you, put you away for a while, so that you can get in a cell, so you can, so you can come to your senses. Where did, where did the prodigal son find himself? The Bible said he found himself when he was put in the hog pen. As long as he was out of the hog pen, he never discovered himself. And as long as you out, as long as you walk and walk in freedom, you're never going to find yourself. You're never going to stop doing drugs. You're never going to stop doing all those things that that destroy your life until God puts you in a place where you're going to find yourself confronted with yourself. Many times you look in the glass, you don't want to look at yourself because you know what's happening in your life. But you ought to be able to look yourself in the face and know that God got His hand on your life. And what you're going through is just setting you up for a greater blessing. That's why some of the greatest preachers has, that have came out of the prison has been incarcerated. Some of the greatest preachers have came out of prison. Some of the greatest preachers have came off a of death row. Because God had allowed them to go there so they could find themselves. Amen. Coming to close. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in death because he had done no violence, neither in deceit found in his mouth. But verse 10 said, listen at this. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquity. Therefore will I divide him with a portion, amen, with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. I want you to know that same Jesus that walked, amen, in Jerusalem when they was hoarding him, Hosanna unto him, he was on his way to the cross. He was on his way to the cross to give his life for you and I because the scripture had to be fulfilled. If he hadn't gone to that cross, you and I wouldn't be here this morning. But thank God he went to the cross. Thank God he suffered for you and I. Thank God they hung him on the the cross, but they couldn't make him stay there. But the Bible said they took him off the cross. They laid him down in the tomb, and the Bible said on the third day, he got up again. And I want you to know, if we believe in him, we're going to get up. We're going to get up out of that grave, because everyone that believes in him, they're going to rise again. Do you believe in him today? 
Is your faith in him this morning? If your faith is in Jesus Christ, the grave is not going to hold you down. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up out of that grave. Grave, you can't hold me down. I got a home come coming. I got a home coming coming. Hallelujah. He's coming in the clouds. He's coming in the sky. He's coming for you and I. He's going to take us home. But the only way you're going to get there, you got to put your faith in him. That's the only, that's the only ticket of getting there. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Because he's coming back again. He's coming back after those who have their name written down in the Lamb Book of Life. He has sent the disciples out to preach the gospel. They came back rejoicing. They said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus said, don't rejoice because the devils are subject to you. But rejoice because your name is written down in the Lamb Book of Life. Because if your name is not written down in the Lamb Book of Life, you are not going, not going to walk in that city that Jesus has prepared for us. Abraham said, I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Are you looking for that city? The Bible says, they, they who look for him, he shall appear unto them. And when he's coming, the world going to know who he is. Because he's coming with the nail scars in his hand. He's coming with the wound in his side. He's coming just like he went up. That our Lord is coming again. Are you ready? Are you ready to go back with him? If he would call you today, are you ready to go back with him? The Bible says in a time we don't think he's coming, he's coming back. But he's coming back for those who are looking for him. Are you looking for him? I was listening to a song that says, if Jesus would come today, would you invite him? Could you welcome him? Or would you be found doing something that you could not uh, greet him? In such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man is going to come. He may come today in your life. He may come this moment in your life. But surely as I stand here and as you stand here, Jesus Christ is coming back again. And if you want to go with him, you got to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to challenge you today, those of you that don't know Christ, you that already know Christ, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm, I'm appealing to those of you who don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's time for us to get ready to go home. This world is just a preparation place. It's a stopping off place. This is not our home. This is not our home, so you're not here to stay. Then you're not going to keep the body that you, that you exist in. You're not going to keep the home that, you, that, you live, that you're living in. Next 10 years, you're going to find another home. Because you're not going to be happy in that home. This is not a home. This is not a home. This is just a stopping off place. This is just a getting ready place. Are you ready to get ready? Are you ready to get ready? Then I want you to say with me, I want those of you that want to receive Christ, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. I see your hands. I see your hand. Those that don't, don't know Christ, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yes, I see your hand up there. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Say, Lord, I'm tired of my sins. I'm tired of my sin. I'm tired of letting sin rule govern my life. I want to be free. You promised me whom the Son of Man set free. He's free indeed. God, I want to be free of my sins. I'm tired of living in bondage every day. I'm tired, of, I'm tired of being controlled by my emotions. I'm tired of being controlled by my fears. God, I want to come to you today. I'm laying down everything. I'm coming home. I'm coming home today. I'm coming home to you, God. And if that's you, I want you to make your way down to the front. Come on. Those of you that have your hand, I want you to make your way down to the front. Up in the back, end, have your hand. Come on down. Make your way on down. We'll wait on you. Make your way on. Come on down to the front. Make your way down. Make your way down. That's your next step. That's your next step in giving your life to Jesus Christ. That's your next step. That's your next step. Come on up to the front. That's right. Come on up. Come on up to the front. Give Christ your life. Amen. Give Jesus your life. Now, here's what I want to 
Here's what I want the workers to do. Here's what I want the worker to listen. Could I have your attention just a minute? Workers, I want to have your attention. Here's what I want you to do. Those, those that are coming for the receive Christ, I want you to lead them in a sinner's prayer. I want you to teach them how to commit their lives to Christ. Amen. And then we're going to give them to you after, we, after service. We're going to instruct them further, okay? But that's what I want you to do. Amen. There's others. Come on. Amen. Go on, continue to pray for them. Where don't pray for them. There's others. Come on. There's another one I saw making her way. There she's coming, making her way down. Come on. Yes, come on up. Come on, mother. That's right. Come on, make your way over to the... Yes, isn't that wonderful? She's coming to give her life to Christ. She's coming to surrender to the Lord. Look, look, look at all these coming to surrender their life to God. Look at they're coming to give God their life. That's, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Thanks. They're coming to give their life to Christ. Look at them. Look at them. Come on. They need somebody to pray with them. They need somebody to pray with them. Come on, workers. Lead them to Christ. Come on. Come on, workers. Pray with them. Leave them. Lead them to Christ. Amen. Lead them to Christ. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. If there's others, make your way down. We got pinned down. Make your way down. Come on down if there's others. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming back again. And he wants you to be with him. He wants you to be with him where he is. And the only way you can get there is by placing your faith and trust in him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come except the Father draw him. God is drawing you today. Come on, don't turn him away. He's drawing you today. Come on home. Come on home. There's another one coming. Come on. There's another one coming. Come on home. Come on home. The Lord is waiting on you. Yes, come on home. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. Let him forgive you. Let him wash you. Let him wash your life. He loves you. He died for you. He wants to be your Savior. He wants to be your Lord. Jesus loves you. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Workers, can I have your attention? <clears throat> now, I want you to, uh, workers, workers, Sister Judy, I want you to make sure to get everybody's name. Uh, those who uh, normally pass the pass out, make sure you, uh, Brother Robin, make sure they have a pad to sign, get their names, because we're going to turn them over in the hand of Sister Judy after the service. And, and um, my pastor, pastor, myself and Pastor Steve and the other Miller's going to meet them in the fellowship hall. We're going to talk with them. And Sister Judy's going to give them a package. Amen. Going to give them a package. Amen. So, where's Pastor Steve? Come on, Pastor Steve. It's amen for Pastor Steve. It's all yours, my friend. It's all yours. It's all yours. All yours.
will be a touch point for you. Put them someplace in your house that you can look on them all through the year and remind yourself that he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in your life. No matter what problem you face, it's no bigger than God. No matter what place you have to walk through, it's no more difficult than what he can carry you through. Amen. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to ask the deacons to come forward right now. We're going to pray over these palm fronds, and we're going to invite you down to grab one for yourself, take it home, amen, and be blessed. For those of you in the balcony, we will have a deacon at the bottom of these stairs. So as you exit, you can pick up a palm frond from them. Bishop, let's pray over these palm fronds right now in the name of Jesus. Would you please pray? We agree with what you already have done. That each one will look upon these palms. Father, they will remember what you have done for them. How your son gave, came and gave his life for them. Let them, as they behold them, let them say to you, Here am I, Lord. I turn my life over to you. All that I am and what I am, I give it back to you. That you may use me to your glory. In Jesus' name. So we're going to, if you'll stand all over the uh, sanctuary with me this morning, we will pray the benediction. If you're a first-time visitor today, you can meet with us in the fellowship hall. We would love to meet you. If you've given your life to Christ for the first time today, please meet with us in the fellowship hall. And if you're interested in baptism or joining the church, please meet with us in the fellowship hall. We would love to talk with you, make sure that those things are taken care of in your life. Amen. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this message. We thank you that your word has been sown into our hearts. We believe that good seed has gone, fallen on good ground and it will produce good fruit in our lives. Father, as we go from this place, help us to be those bright and shining lights, those of people, Lord God, who reach out to others and preach Jesus as Philip preached Jesus, Lord. Help us to remember to share that which you have given us with others, Father God, in Jesus' name. Father, bless these people. Watch over them. Lord, let them feel your presence and your power in their lives every day, Father God, in Jesus' name. And Father, for all of this, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Please come get your blessed palm frond this morning.